it is now time for our featured speaker of the afternoon, and, and now we'll be back here. Uh, let's bring Ed back up to introduce PJ. Okay, we're, uh, we have a featured speaker from New Hampshire. Uh, I looked him up on the internet, and uh, apparently he was the editor of uh, National Lampoon, back when National Lampoon was funny. Yes, yeah, we need a little, a little quiet here. I'm just chewing a burger or something. And uh, numerous other magazines, articles, and whatnot. But here, here's the interesting thing. He is a, uh, a H.L. Mencken scholar, my favorite writer. My wife would be annoyed at me. I would stay up at night and read H.L. Mencken and laugh myself sick. So uh, we have that in common. It's uh, P.J. O'Rourke, ladies and gentlemen. Give a big hand and quiet down. We're having a tough time making themselves heard over the voice of the people, and that is as it should be. <laughs> so, well, let's say again. Now, I, I'm, just, I'm just here actually to say uh, what an uh, amazing economic plan Obama has. Amazingly bad. If it is working, tax it. If it isn't working, bail it out. If it's just scraping by, drop Barney Frank on it until it screams for help. <laughs> Government gets into the car business. You can predict the result. You know, it's a lightweight, compact vehicle with a small carbon footprint using sustainable alternative energy. When I was a kid, we called it a schwim. <laughs> Government, Government gets into the health care business. Uh, and just, uh, just one more competitor, government is just one more competitor, except this competitor, federal government, has legal monopoly on deadly force. This competitor has guns. Now what's another organization that gets into business, just one more competitor like any other competitor, except they've got guns. Yeah. This is the Sopranos, you know, I mean, with Obamacare, you know, being a doctor is like being the last legit trash hauler in New Jersey. <laughs> I don't want hope and change. Now, I mean, if you're like me, and you just finally got your youngest kid out of diapers, change is not a good word. <laughs> I mean, you know, change is not a good word most of the time. But change your tire, you better change your ways, change your life, any change in order of all, you know? Then there's hope. You remember your Greek mythology. The box that hope comes in is Pandora's box. And after Pandora opens that box and death and disease and all the ills that plague mankind are loosed upon the world, nothing is left in the box but hope. Now is it a good thing when you've got nothing left but hope? I mean, how about when you've got nothing left except hope for a government bailout in your whole life, you know? Bringing politicians in to run the economy is like saying, Dad burned dinner, let's get the dog to cook. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not letting the Republicans off the hook here. We've got two parties in this country. We've got the stupid party and the silly party. You know? <laughs> now, I'm kind of stupid. I, I don't agree with the Boston Globe uh, 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 editorial page, so obviously I'm not very intelligent. So I usually vote Republican. You know? I, vote, I vote for the stupid party. I vote Republican because Republicans have fewer ideas, <laughs> but not few enough. <laughs> Republicans are the party that says the government doesn't work and then they get elected and prove it. You know? <laughs> we got the Republican legacy, we got screwed up economy, a couple of scary wars, public opinion of elected officials down around Mrs. John Edwards' opinion of John. Uh, Bush policies don't get me started, no child left behind. What if they deserve to be left behind? <laughs> what if they deserve a smack on the behind? Yeah. National testing program to test which, whether kids are, are, are what? Stupid? You've got kids. Kids are stupid. <laughs> and Bush said if illegal immigrants wanted citizenship, they'd have to do three things. They'd have to pay taxes, learn English, and work in a meaningful job. Well, Bush didn't meet two out of three of those qualifications. <laughs> and for all his talk, Bush never did anything to, about Social Security. And that chain letter is about to run out of suckers. You know how that works. Put your name on the bottom of the list, mail a check for $1,193 to everybody over 65, break this chain and you'll never be elected to political office. There's no money in the Social Security Trust Fund and there never has been because money is a government IOU. 
And the government cannot create a trust fund by saving its own IOUs any more than I was able to create a trust fund for myself by writing, I get a chunk of money when I turn 21 on a piece of paper. Social Security, just such a piece of paper, except it says, I get a chunk of money when I turn 65. The government promises, consult American Indians for a further discussion of government promises. <laughs> but I tell you, I will tell you though, no offense again to the, to the candidates here, you know, one of our problems, our problems with politics is that we keep blaming political problems on politicians. We think lousy politicians are what's wrong. We got rid of George W. Bush and, and everything is wonderful. We've got peace in Afghanistan, love in Iraq, unemployment is at 2%. You know? Problem isn't politicians. The problem is politics. Politicians are chefs, some good, some bad. Politics is roadkill. The problem isn't the cook, the problem is the food. Let me restate that. The problem isn't the cook, the problem is the cookbook. Politics is the idea that all of society's ills can be cured politically. This is like a cookbook where the recipe for everything is to fry it. The fruit cocktail is fried, the soup is fried, the salad is fried, so is the ice cream and cake. Your, your can of beer is rolled in breadcrumbs and dumped in the deep fat fryer. And this is just no way to cook up public policy. Now my job is to make fun of politics. But after 40 years of making fun of politics, I have realized that I'm having about as much fun as a grizzly bear getting a bikini wax. I, I, I hate politics. I hate politics. I don't just hate bad politics. I hate all politics. Sometimes I even hate democracy. I mean, imagine if our clothes were selected by the majority of shoppers, which would be teenage girls. Dick Cheney would have spent two terms as vice president with his midriff exposed. You know? no. Imagine what's deciding, uh, deciding what's for dinner uh, by family secret ballot. I've got three kids and three dogs in my family. We would be having Fruit Loops and spoiled meat. You know what I mean? <laughs> politics stink. Think about how we use the word politics. Are office politics ever a good thing? When somebody plays politics to get a promotion, does, does he or she deserve it? When we call a coworker a real politician, is that a compliment? Politics stink. And to my mind, true conservatism is a kind of room deodorizer, trying to keep the bad smell of politics out of home, school, and office, including the doctor's office. You know? Now, some people, some people say that politics don't, uh, that, that our politicians don't accomplish anything because of bipartisan, uh, 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 because of partisan, excuse me, because of partisan political bickering. This is wrong. We want them to bicker. We want them to bicker. The two most frightening words in Washington are bipartisan consensus. Bipartisan consensus is like when my doctor and my lawyer agree with my wife that I need help. <laughs> Now, I know politicians. I like politicians. I am friends with politicians from both sides of the aisle. Politicians are great until they stick their noses into things they don't understand, such as most things.